Hi there, and welcome back to an older reading format of RPG Horror Stories. Sorry for any inconvenience this may cause, but that last video took me three days to make all of those slides. We're talking three days of work for three minutes of content. Better yet, be surprised because I'm not doing this again. <laughs> now let's talk about radical anti-religion. Hold on a second, don't click off, I'm about to explain myself in a second. Don't rush me, you impatient bastards. I mean, if you really are one of these people, feel free to leave your dislike and go. Don't actually do that. You know in some of my previous videos I talk about radical religious people who make up bullshit just to fearmonger people into thinking anyone with a live and let live philosophy are actually evil? Well, there are anti-religious people who are just as nutter butter on the other side of that fence who will make up anything about other people who subscribe to a faith for attention, regardless if they're moderate or zealous followers. And we're going to talk about one of those today. This story is called Christianity Causes Player to Quit the Camp campaign, and it's not what you think it is, trust me. Y'all know how this goes. Pull up a chair, make yourselves uncomfortable while we read about Lucy the Looney. Hello, I'm back with a new story that happened not so long ago. New story? This poster's been on before? I, I suck at continuity. For context, I recently started to get back into D&D this year after taking an extended break. Fair warning, this is a rant as well. Over the summer, I had a former classmate reach out to me saying that she was going to DM a D&D &D campaign and wondered if I wanted to join. I said yeah, so I get invited into the Discord server with four other people, including the DM. Five minutes later, I get personally messaged by one of the other members of the server. This is my first encounter with the problem player. We can call her Lucy. This message wasn't a hi or welcome or anything like that. It was an out of the blue question. Are you religious? That's a weird way to introduce yourself. No hi or welcome or what your name is or star sign letting me know whether or not you're going to ruin my life. OP replies with hello. Why are you asking? I need to know for the D&D &D campaign. I'm curious as to why my religious status would be relevant to D&D. &D. Would you please just answer the question? Okay, yes, I'm religious. What religion? Christianity. What type? I don't have a denomination. <laughs> what does that mean? It means I follow the New Testament and the teachings of Jesus, and I believe in God, but I don't go to churches or follow specific doctrines that denominations have. <laughs> Isn't that just Protestant? No, I don't go to Protestant churches or follow their specific doctrines either. <laughs> okay. And that was that. I was pretty suspicious of the ordeal, but eventually dropped it. I would later learn that she asked everyone in the group the same question, and they all happened to answer as being non-religious. I don't want to call them atheists, as they didn't describe themselves that way. I end up letting the DM know what happened. DM and Lucy have been friends for a long time, and she explains to me that Lucy has been harassed by religious people in the past because of her sexuality and political views. This genuinely upset me. I can't speak for other religious groups, but it is my personal belief that any true follower of Christianity would know not to treat others poorly due to things like this. So I sent a message to Lucy the next day. The message reads as, Hey Lucy, I'm reaching out because DM told me about your troubles with religious people in the past. I am sorry that you were treated that way. We aren't all like that, I promise. I'm definitely not like that. I truly don't care about your race, religion, sexuality, or political standing, and I hope to prove that in the upcoming time we will be spending with the others. If you're nice to me, I'm nice to you. In the event that I do end up doing something that upsets you, please don't hesitate to reach out to me about it. I didn't get a response, and I wasn't expecting one, so I let the matter rest. Apparently, this was the wrong move, because a few hours later, I get a message from the DM. Hey, OP, did you send some hateful messages to Lucy? No. Well, she just texted me saying you were saying she isn't emotionally stable enough to handle religious people and that you were here to offer advice on how to do so. What? This is the biggest red flag to arise in this entire story. Notice how she immediately decides to take this opportunity to tell everyone OP's olive branch is barbed wire? 
If she's making stuff up about OP straight away, imagine what else she's been lying about. Like, her story about being harassed by religious people? Now, I'm not saying that there is no truth to her experience at all, but if she's willing to lie about someone because of a single vague quality of their character, and I mean personality-wise, not in-game character, what else has she been making up? It's the boy who cried wolf complex. Back to the story. I was fairly confused and sent the screenshot of our Discord chat. DM said she was also confused and would look into it. Here's the thing. If you're gonna slander somebody in your circle, that somebody is going to have receipts. Girl, just don't be about the drama. I thank her for checking in with me rather than flat out believing her and go about my day. The next day I get another message from DM explaining that Lucy is going through some tough times and took it out on you. Now, I get that life can be really shitty sometimes. It can be easy to let it get to you, but taking it out on others is not okay. I just like to point out that vilifying someone ain't taking your frustrations out on someone else. If you're in a mood and you take your frustrations out on a friend, you'd be snapping at them directly. You wouldn't be going around to your friends and spreading rumors trying to paint your target as a terrible person. That's just not what quote unquote taking it out on others looks like. If you take it out on someone else, that person deserves an apology. They were treated unfairly over something they had nothing to do with and no control over. Did I get an apology? No. DM said she was sorry she acted that way, and I was thankful for that, but it wasn't DM's fault. Lucy is the one in the wrong. Oh well, moving on. And the DM is just like, yeah, I'm sure this doesn't require me to take any actions. It's not like nipping this in the bud is a good idea or anything. Now, this DM might not have had that much experience with this kind of problem, so I'm not going to fault her for that. But that won't stop me from docking points, though. Session Zero rolls around and we all meet up over a Discord call. Now, I like to cater to the needs of the party when I make my characters. I like to fill in roles that we lack. Our party, so far, consisted of a rogue, a wizard, and a warlock. I quickly hit up a friend of mine who has lots of D&D experience and asked what he would go for. He told me that the party was lacking a tank and a healer, so a paladin would be a solid choice. I have never played paladin before, but I figured it was the best choice. The exact details of every character aren't really important except the fact that my character was a lawful good paladin of Bahamut. We finish session zero and the DM makes a folder with all of her character sheets that are easily accessible to everyone. I was interested in my fellow party members' characters and looked over them all. The wizard and the sorcerer were fairly good characters but have nothing significant to the story. Our rogue, which happens to be Lucy's character on the other hand, had a very interesting backstory and personality traits. Oh, of course. Why is it always the rogues? The rogues on this subreddit are like Slytherin House at Hogwarts. Not all of them are problematic, but the problematic ones mostly happen to be rogues. Also, hating, hating religious, religious people, people is not, not a personality. personality. Let's just say, to summarize her rogue, as a woman who was abused and enslaved by a religious cult and was now very anti-religious. Oi, Gewalt, now we're getting into cringe territory. Put on your EVA suits, everyone. Here is one of the quotes under her notable quotes from my character section. Not kidding, that was an actual section she made in her character notes. Religious people, especially religious warriors, are utter idiots. They will never amount to anything if I can help it, and deserve to be taken advantage of. Meaning you are going to deliberately try and get in their way to prevent them from getting their job done? I had a feeling that this was all to spite me. I have no issue with anti-religious people or characters. I was even pretty hopeful that this could be a potentially good slash fun thing for RP and party relation developments. Oh, you beautiful optimistic idiot. I'm sure you can read the warning signs better than that. However, the fact that she specifically mentioned religious warriors, which is basically what a paladin is, didn't sit right with me. Yes, the sanity is returning. I expressed this to the DM, and she took note of it. The next day we roll into session 1. Our characters were on a large commercial vessel carrying a large number of passengers to another continent. During one night of the voyage, we were ambushed and boarded by pirates. 
Each party member separately fights to defend themselves. During the chaos, the ship crashes along a rock and is torn apart. I'm just picturing this. Our party ends up being washed ashore on a body of land. This is how our characters meet and band together for survival purposes. We get around to me, and when I mention my character's deity, Lucy interrupts us out of character. I thought you were Christian, LP. Yes? So, shouldn't your deity be God? Why would he be? Isn't it against your religion to believe in other gods? I don't believe in Bahamut, my fantasy character does. God is fantasy, sweetie. Ugh. Okay, I admit I'm guilty of using this argument when debating overzealous conservatives, but this antagonistic statement was 100% unnecessary in this context. You and I can disagree on that. Even if he was, he isn't in any of the D&D books. You can homebrew him, couldn't you? If I wanted to, yes, but I don't. This is a fake character set in a fake universe. I don't need or want to homebrew the Christian god in D&D. What are you trying to get from all this? Oh, nothing. Sorry for interrupting. Are you though? The DM tries to roll over the conversation that just occurred, but there was a certain awkwardness to the rest of the session. Probably because the DM, who is responsible for making sure her players are comfortable and able to focus on the plot, just decided to not address the clear and present issue. I was fairly annoyed at Lucy for challenging my character's compatibility with my religious values, but was more annoyed at the fact that she disrupted the session just to do so. Why? What was there to gain from that? I sent a message to the DM stating that what she did was not okay. DM said she would talk to her about it. The next session rolls up and we continued our journey. Throughout our adventure, we find out that we are on an inhabited island. There was a city that was divided into six districts. Each district leader made up a circle of counselors that govern the city. When we arrive at the city, we are greeted by the religious counselor, who happened to also be a follower of Bahamut. The counselor announced that she heard about a recent nearby shipwreck and was organizing a rescue party until she heard of our party's arrival. The DM explained that our character's ragtag and beat up look after surviving a crash was a dead giveaway that we were survivors. She further explained that she was relieved that we were alright and offered us shelter at the Temple of Bahamut, where she also ensured that we would be taken care of. Now, my character has a backstory revolving around being fairly untrustworthy of others, so I announced that I don't trust this person and wish to check for signs of deceit. Sure, roll for insight and DM me your roll. 17. She DMs me this message. Yeah, you notice her eyes have trouble meeting any of yours and her feet shuffle with her speech. Lucy once again interjected out of character. He didn't succeed, did he? I can't say. It's up to him to reveal if he did later on when your party has some more privacy. Well, if he did, he shouldn't. Religious people aren't mentally developed enough to question their superiors. There's no realistic way he would have been untrustworthy of a religious leader of Bahamut's teachings. I finally speak up. Look, do you have an issue playing with me? This is the second time now you've spoken up about inconsistency with my character and religion. Hey, calm down. How old are we? Don't attack me like that. Didn't you literally just call him mentally underdeveloped? Hot meat kettle. What are you talking about? I just asked you a question. Can we end the session here? I don't feel safe right now. Oh, for fuck's sake. The DM replies, Um, okay. We end the session there and I feel completely lost. I end up chatting with the DM and the other players over Discord. They all seem fairly confused about the ordeal. We come to the conclusion that Lucy needs to be confronted about this, either by the DM privately or with everyone before we start the next session, like an intervention. During the next week, the DM tells us that she will talk to Lucy about her behavior. Okay, cool. Hopefully this will sort itself out. It didn't sort itself out. In the next session, we get a chance for our characters to converse with each other. My character tells the others he has a reason to doubt the integrity of the religious counselor. <laughs> no way you've noticed something like that. Her gaze seemed to trail away from ours and her feet shuffled with her words. You're a brainwashed pawn, a paladin of all things. You don't question. You just use your brawn to keep your owner in charge. You may choose not to heed my warning, but don't cry to me when facing the consequences. 
Lucy just laughed and the DM ushers us to move on. When we approached the temple we were offered shelter, I repeated my warning. The party agreed that we shouldn't trust these people and find another way to get shelter. Lucy, however, tries to convince the party to have me stay at the temple by myself without any justification. We overrule her and she goes quiet. We got about another 10 minutes when suddenly a group of religious men and women approach our party. They try and tell us that we would be safe at the temple and plead for us to come back to stay. Lucy once again announces that my character should believe them. I was very close to speaking out again, but the DM spoke first. We've already been over this, Lucy. Stop bringing this up. I don't think you have a strong enough understanding of how religious people work or think. Oh, hello, Projection. Long time no see. I don't think you have a strong enough understanding that this is my campaign and I make the rules. I don't care about how you think all religious people act, but I can tell you it isn't accurate. Now stop trying to tell me who should and should not pass checks. And finally, where TF was this conversation earlier in the game? When you DM a game and you notice a player harboring a vendetta against a fellow player, it is important to stomp that out as soon as possible. Maybe she thought they should hash it out first, or was probably working on a strike system, I don't know. But the point is, we're finally at the stage where the Game Master is drawing the line on this behavior. So you're taking his side now? It isn't a side. You are being disruptive and rude. I think OP can agree that what you've been doing has been incredibly disrespectful too. Yes, I do. I don't care what your personal views on religion are, but that doesn't give you the right to disrespect the views of others. Now he's pushing his religious views on me. How are you going to just let him do that? How am I pushing any of my religious views on you? I think the concept on common courtesy applies to most situations. If anything, you have been pushing your views of religious people on me and the rest of the group. You keep wasting our time and no one here appreciates it. Lucy leaves the Discord channel and then leaves the server. I thank the DM for having my back and we continue the session. The next day, the DM brings to my attention that Lucy has been ranting a downright untrue version of the story to people on another server they are both part of. According to her, I forced the D&D game to be a Christian game. I furthermore tried to attack and kill the other characters due to their sexuality and, as a cherry on top, I apparently labeled her character as a witch and tried to kill her because I was jealous of her character's obvious higher intelligence, quote unquote. I didn't care so much about a bunch of people I don't know believing I was some religious fanatic, but she then tried to pressure DM for my name and apartment location. Oh, so the killing and attacking threats were also projection. The more you know. I don't know for sure why she wanted that information, but I doubt it was anything benevolent. Both I and the DM blocked her, and she also left that server. We continued to play D&D with the remainder of the group, and eventually finished the campaign around August. And that's all! Thank you for reading! Unfortunately, people like this do exist on both sides of the aisle. There are religious nutters out there higher up on the platform pyramid who will make up anything and everything to ensure the demonization of any particular group of people they don't like. And likewise, on the other side, there are non-religious people with the same kind of vendetta against Christians, and they'll make up any kind of story time type sob story to make themselves appear both the victim and heroes of their own story. And in my personal open yawn, the problem player of this story most likely made up most of, if not all, the bad experiences she claimed to have had with religious people when she discovered the type of attention it got her. But I'm glad OP got to finish the campaign with the rest of the party in peace. If I have anything to say about this, it's that if you have a problem with someone, talk to them about it and actually listen to what they have to say instead of making up your own headcanon about them. Don't bring your real-life drama to the D&D table. Don't lie yourself silly, don't be a dick on social media, and eat plenty of broccoli. See ya!